Welcome to my channel. I hope you like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to knit and crochet this little pullover sweater for boys and girls between two and three years old. Now the yoke is crocheted and then the rest of the body along with the sleeves is knit and it's very easy so I hope you like it. Now you can also make it smaller or bigger from one to two years old and up to seven years old. Down here in the information box below, I'll go ahead and leave you some information on how you can make it smaller or bigger, so be sure to check that out. Now, in my channel, I already have the same little sweater but smaller for babies. I'll go ahead and leave you the link to that tutorial in the information box below. And as always, if you prefer a written pattern, check out my Etsy shop. I'll leave the link to my Etsy shop in the information box below as well. Thank you so much for your support. Now, to make this pullover sweater or jumper, I used this yarn. It's DK weight yarn. I used exactly 100 grams in this yarn here for the yoke and a little bit here of the body and then for the rest of the sweater I used this style craft special in this cream color and I used about 90 grams so in total I used about 190 grams to make the two to three year size now stay tuned in another tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the adult version of this little pullover sweater since many of you commented in my last tutorial that you wanted an adult version. So yes, I will be working on that soon, so stay tuned. Okay, let's get started, but don't forget to subscribe, activate the notifications bell to all notifications so that YouTube can recommend my videos. And if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching. To knit this little jumper, I'll be using this 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and today I'm using this DK weight yarn. At the beginning of the video, I showed you the yarn that I'm using, and I told you how much yarn you're going to need for the size that we're going to make. You can also use number three yarn or a ply. Now here to begin, we're going to make the yoke first. I'm going to use this crochet hook to make the yoke, and then we're going to switch to knitting needles to knit the body and the sleeves. So to begin, I have 82 chains. The stitch multiple to this base chain is multiples of three plus one. Without stretching, this chain is measuring about 17 inches, which is about 43 centimeters. So here to begin, the first thing we need to do is we need to join to the first chain. So make sure that your chain is not twisted. Now insert your hook into the first chain grab a loop here and join. Now for the first row we're going to chain one. Now insert your hook back into the same chain, the first chain, and make a single crochet. Single crochet into the next chain, single crochet into the next, and so on. For this first row this is all I'm going to do. One single crochet on each chain at the end of this first row I'm going to be left with 82 single crochets. Continue like this I will meet you at the end of this first row. I'm here at the end of this first row this is where I did single crochets I have 82 single crochets. Now to finish go on top of the first single crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for the second row we're going to chain two. These two chains never count as a stitch now in the second row we're going to increase so beginning into the first single crochet here make a double crochet into the next make a double crochet now into the next which is the third single crochet make a double crochet increase so make two double crochets into this same single crochet again make two double crochets And then to the next, make your increase. So make two double crochets. Again, into the next two, make a double crochet. And then to the next, your double crochet increase. And this is all we're going to do here for the second row. So continue like this. I will meet you at the end of this row. I'm here at the end of this second row. Now here at the end of this row, I finish with one double crochet. Here's my last increase, so into the next, which was the last single crochet, I just did a double crochet. I have a total of 109 double crochets at the end of this second row. Now to finish this row, go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for the third row, 
chain one. In this third row, I'm going to make front post and back post double crochets. So beginning into the first double crochet, which is the same double crochet we joined, make a front post double crochet. Now into the next, make a back post double crochet. Into the next, front post double crochet. And into the next, back post double crochet. This is all we're going to do here for the third row. You're just going to alternate between front post and back post double crochets all around. At the end of this third row, you're going to have 109 stitches as well. I'll meet you at the end of this row. I'm here at the end of this third row. This is where I did front post and back post double crochets. My last stitch here is a front post double crochet. Now to finish, go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for row four, chain one. In the fourth row, we're going to repeat the same thing, front post and back post double crochets. So beginning into the first double crochet here, make a front post double crochet. Into the next, back post double crochet. Into the next, front post double crochet, and so on. This is how we're going to continue for the rest of this fourth row. We're just going to work these stitches exactly how they are. Front post and back post double crochets. I'll meet you at the end of this fourth row. I'm here at the end of this fourth row. This is where I did front post and back post double crochets. My last stitch here is a front post double crochet at the end of the fourth row. Now to finish, go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. And this is how I finished the fourth row with a total of 109 stitches as well. Now for the fifth row, we're going to chain two. In this fifth row, we're going to increase. So here to begin, I'm going to make three double crochets. So beginning into this first double crochet, make a double crochet. And into the next two, a double crochet as well. So here I have three double crochets. Remember the two chains never count. Now into the next stitch here, make your double crochet increase. So make two double crochets. Now again, make three double crochets. One, two, three. And into the next, make your double crochet increase. So two double crochets. This is how you're going to continue for the rest of this fifth row. I'll meet you at the end. I'm here at the end of this fifth row. Up to here, I have 135 double crochets. I still have this last double crochet. Now here at the end, I'm going to make two double crochets as well. This is because I want to make sure that at the end of this row, I finish with an odd number of stitches. So now I have 137. Now to finish, go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for the sixth row, we're going to chain one. For row six and seven, we're going to work front post and back post double crochets. So beginning into this first double crochet, make a front post double crochet. Now into the next, back post double crochet, into the next, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, and so on. This is all we're going to do here for this sixth row. So continue, I'll meet you at the end of the sixth row. I'm here at the end of this sixth row. This is where I did front post and back post double crochets. My last stitch here is a front post double crochet. I have 137 stitches. To finish, go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for the seventh row, chain one. In this row, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to work a front post double crochet here into this first double crochet, then into the next a back post double crochet, into the next front post double crochet, back post double crochet into the next and so on. Here this is all we're going to do. At the end of this seventh row, I'm going to have 137 stitches as well. Continue, I'll meet you at the end of this seventh row. 
I'm here at the end of the seventh row. This is where I did front post and back post double crochets. My last stitch here is a front post double crochet and I have a total of 137 stitches. To finish, go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for the eighth row, we're going to chain two. In this eighth row, we're going to increase. Here we're going to make four double crochets and into the next, we're going to make our double crochet increase. Let me show you. Beginning on top of the first double crochet, make your first double crochet. That's one, into the next, that's two, that's three, and four. Remember the two chains do not count. Now into the next, make your double crochet increase. So make two double crochets. And this is all you're going to do for this eighth row. You're going to make four double crochets. One, two, three, four, and into the next two. And that's all you're going to do for the rest of the eighth row. Continue, I'll meet you at the end. I'm here at the end of this eighth row. In this row we did increases. Now up to here I have 162 stitches and I still have two stitches left. Now here at the end I'm going to make a double crochet into this next double crochet and into the last double crochet I'm going to make two double crochets. Now I'm doing this because I want to make sure I finish with an odd number of stitches. So now I have 165 stitches. To finish go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch. Now for rows 9 and 10 we're going to work from post and back post double crochets just like we did here in these rows. So to begin we're going to chain one. Here into this first double crochet I'm going to make a front post double crochet into the next a back post double crochet into the next front post double crochet and into the next back post double crochet this is all you're going to do here for the ninth row front post and back post double crochets to finish go on top of the first double crochet join with a slip stitch chain one and then repeat the same thing for the tenth row you're just going to work these stitches exactly how they are front post and back post double crochets and at the end of both of these rows you're going to also have 165 stitches now continue finish these two rows i'll meet you at the end of the tenth row I finished making rows 9 and 10. This is where we did front post and back post double crochets. At the end of these rows, I had 165 stitches as well. Now for row 11, we're going to chain two. In this row, we're going to increase once again. So here we're going to make five double crochets and into the next two. Let me show you beginning into the same stitch we joined, which is the first double crochet. Make your first double crochet. That's one into the next, that's two three, four, five double crochets. Now into the next, make your double crochet increase. So make two double crochets. Now continue in the same way, just make five double crochets. One, two, three, four, five double crochets and into the next two. Continue like this to the end of this 11th row. I will meet you here at the end to show you what we need to do next. I'm here at the end of this 11th row. In this row we have increased. Here's my last increase. I have two double crochets here and I still have three stitches left. Up to here I have 189 double crochets. So here into these last three double crochets this is what I'm going to do into the next two make a double crochet now into the next which is the last double crochet here make an increase so make two double crochets I'm doing this so that I finish this row uh, with an odd number of stitches just like we have been doing here for all of these rows so I have now 193 stitches to finish go on top of the first double crochet and join with a slip stitch now for rows 12 and 13 we're going to repeat these two rows front post and back post double crochets so chain one here beginning into this first double crochet make a front post double crochet into the next 
a back post double crochet into the next front post double crochet and so on this is all we're going to do for the 12th row to finish this row you're going to go here on top of the first double crochet join with a slip stitch chain one and then repeat the same thing for row 13. at the end of both of these rows you're also going to have 193 stitches continue finish row 12 and 13 i'll meet you at the end okay i finished making rows 12 and 13 that's where we did front post and back post double crochets at the end of these rows i have 193 stitches now the yoke is almost done as it is it's measuring about 11.5 centimeters which is about 4.5 inches now if you notice the color here is a bit different than what i started with that was another tutorial that i was working on it's the spanish tutorial that i do but the yoke is exactly the same now this is the yarn that i'm using it's james c brett baby double knit yarn you can also use a ply or number three yarn so here what we're going to do next is we're going to make one more row um, as i mentioned at the end of the 13th row i have a total of 193 stitches i need to increase 25 more stitches so that at the end of this next row that i'm going to do i need to have 218 stitches so to do this here what i'm going to do is i'm going to make single crochets here all around and i'm going to increase now I need to I think I need to increase every seventh stitch so 193 divided by 25 that's 7.72 so I'm going to increase after the seventh stitch so to begin here we're going to chain one and into this first stitch here make a single crochet now I'm going to make a total of seven so that's one two three four five six seven single crochets now into the next i'm going to increase so make two single crochets and this is how i'm going to continue i'm going to make seven and then into the next two seven two seven two all around make sure to count your stitches here towards the end to make sure that you have 218 stitches so we may need to adjust here towards the end but uh, just count your stitches the important thing here is that you end with 218 single crochets at the end of this 14th row i'm here here at the end of this 14th row in this row i have increased i have a total of 218 stitches now here towards the end i had to adjust a little bit so that i end with 218 stitches so make sure that you do the same thing the important thing again is that you finish with 218 stitches now here i just joined to the beginning with a slip stitch i'm going to now continue with my knitting needles these are 24 inch 3.5 millimeter knitting needles these are circular needles i'm going to knit this next part here the sweater uh, which is the body this is going to be the first row what i'm going to do is into each one of these single crochets that we did in the previous row through the center here i'm going to insert my knitting needle and i'm going to grab a loop like this we're going to pick up these stitches here and after i finish this row row one i'm going to be left with 218 stitches in my knitting needle so all we're going to do for this row is just pick up all of these stitches and again you're going to be left with 218 stitches on your knitting needle so continue all around i will meet you here at the end i finished picking up all of these stitches i have a total of 218 stitches now what we're going to do next is we're going to continue and knit for a total of five rows and what i'm going to do here is because i only have one skein of this yarn and i don't have enough what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue with this yarn here it's the same way it's dk weight yarn i'm going to use style craft this here is in the color cream so i'm going to continue and do the rest of the sweater along with the sleeves uh, in this color so i've attached my yarn here to the end of the previous color so now all i'm going to do is just knit all around uh, for a total of five rows like this now this here is still part of the yoke after we finish these five rows i'm going to separate the sleeves so continue and knit 
for a total of five rows. Here I forgot to place a stitch marker to mark the beginning of the row. So make sure that you place a stitch marker here. So continue, uh, knit a total of five rows, and then I'll come back and show you how to divide the sleeves. Okay, I finished making these five rows. I meant five rows counting the first row where we picked up all of the stitches. So you should have five, one, two, three, four, five rows here. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to divide uh, for the sleeves. I have a total of 218 stitches. So to divide here for the back side, I have 66 stitches, so 33 and 33 on each side. For each one of the sleeves, I'm going to leave 43 stitches. And for the front, I'm going to leave 66 stitches. So that's a total of 218 stitches. So 33, 33, 43, 43 for the sleeves and 66 for the front. So here to begin, I'm going to knit 33. That's one, two, three, Thirty-three. There. I've knit 33 stitches. I'm going to remove this stitch marker and now I'm going to remove these 43 stitches for the first sleeve. So to do this I'm going to use this plastic tubing here. Just put it in this needle here. Now I'm going to pull my wire right here where I have the stitch marker. So I have 43 stitches here. And all I do is just pull this. You can also use just a piece of yarn and a yarn needle and remove these stitches. The important thing is that you remove 43 stitches. Now we're going to leave these 43 stitches here. This is going to be the first sleeve. So I'm going to place a stitch marker here to mark the beginning of this first sleeve. Now I'm going to continue along and here I'm going to add four stitches right under the sleeve. So that's one, two, three, four. Now, we're going to continue and knit the front. For the front, I have 66 stitches. So continue and finish knitting these 66 stitches. I will meet you here to show you how we're going to separate the second sleeve. I finished knitting these 66 stitches here, so now we're going to remove the next 43 stitches for the second sleeve. Now we're just going to leave these stitches here until we work on the second sleeve. I'm going to place a stitch marker right here to mark the beginning of the second sleeve. And now we're going to continue along and knit the stitches that remain here for this side. But before you do that, you need to add four stitches. So add four stitches here under the sleeves. And now continue and finish knitting these last 33 stitches. And that's all we're going to do. So finish this first row and then I'll meet you here at the end. I finished this first row. This is where we divided the sleeves. At the end of this row, you should have a total of 140 stitches. We have 66 total stitches here for the back and I have 66 stitches for the front plus four stitches on both sides. That's a total of 140 stitches. From here on, all we're going to do is just knit all around for every row. This is going to be the body. I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do here for the body. It all depends on the measurement that I need for this size, but continue watching. I always let you know how many rows I do. So here I'm going to show you what you need to do where 
we added the four extra stitches just so that you can see how they worked. Here's the first stitch that I added. Now, these stitches sometimes are a bit tedious, but with patience, all you need to do is just knit the stitches here. Four. And that's all you need to do. Now continue for the front and knit the next 66 stitches and then continue on and finish the row. Then you're going to do the same thing over and over again, just knit in the round. Continue watching. I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do here for the body. So continue and I'll meet you at the end of that row. Okay, I'm almost done with the body. So far, I have done a total of 60 rows from here up to here. There's 60 rows and it's measuring, same from here up to here. It's measuring about 22 centimeters, which is about 8.75 inches. If you want to make this longer, you can. Um, I'm just going to do 60. So now what we're going to do is the bottom hem. Now, if you notice some color changes here, that is the yarn that I was using here for the yoke. Um, I only had a little bit left, so I decided to add it here in the body. Now, for the bottom here, I'm going to knit one per one, but I'm going to do a twisted ribbing. So to do this, we're going to knit the first stitch, but I'm going to go through the center so that the stitch is twisted. Now, the next stitch, I'm going to purl. The next stitch, again, knit through the center so that it's twisted. You can see the twist there. And then the next purl. So only the knit stitches we're going to twist. So knit through the center, purl. Knit through the center and purl. Again, you're going to knit through the center so that the stitch is twisted and then purl. Twist the knit stitch, purl. And that's how you're going to continue all around. I'll meet you here at the end of this first row for the hem so that I can show you how you're going to continue on and finish the rest. I'm here at the end of this first row for the bottom hem. My last stitch here is a purl. Past your stitch marker, we have the first stitch. This stitch is a twisted knit stitch. So we're going to continue with the same thing. All you do is just knit through the center and twist this knit stitch and then purl the next. So twist, a twisted knit stitch, purl, a twisted knit stitch, purl. And that's all we're going to do. Now, I think I'm going to do about 10 rows. If it's more or less, continue watching. I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do here for the bottom hem. So continue this way and I'll meet you at the end of that row. I finished the hem, I did a total of 10 rows. So now we're going to cast off this part here. So to do this, we're just going to work these stitches exactly how they are. So the first stitch here is a knit. So I am going to knit a twisted stitch. The next stitch I'm going to purl. Now bring this first stitch or the second stitch over the first stitch like this. Make sure that when you do these stitches here in this last row, that they're nice and loose. So the next stitch, knit, bring the second stitch over the first. Again, the next one is a purl, so purl, and bring the second stitch over the first. Next one, knit, and bring the second stitch over the first. And this is all we're going to do. So you just continue in the same way, and you just bring one stitch over the first and so on and that's how we're going to cast off so continue i finished casting off my stitches here's my last stitch so i've cut my yarn so just pass your yarn through this last loop and this part here is done now we're going to join to the beginning so with one of these yarn needles we're going to join so to join we have the first 
stitch here this is the knit row so go right into this stitch through both loops like this pull your yarn and now go through the last stitch right here and go down and now it's joined now to hide your yarn you're just going to go on the inside and you can choose which side you're going to either go here or here these are the columns here these are the pearl columns so I'm going to go right here this is the closest so go through both loops right there go up the next row and repeat the same thing for a couple of stitches Now work your way down in the exact same way. And then just to secure it a bit more, just go up once or twice. body is done along with the hem and this is how it looks this is the front so now what we're going to do is I'm going to make the neck here before we do the sleeve so to do the neck um, we're going to do it like this this is the same pattern it's just that this is the Spanish tutorial so we're going to do the same thing here so we're going to pick up all of these stitches that we have around the neckline and we're going to use the same needles here, the 3.5. Now to do this part here with a crochet hook, we're going to start right here. This is the chain that we did at the beginning with the crochet hook. So just insert a hook there so that you can pull this loop through. Now put it into your needle. I'm using the same needles. And we're going to go into each one of these chains and pick up a stitch here's the next one pick up a stitch into the next pick up a stitch and so on the important thing is that when you pick up these stitches that you have an even number because we're going to do the same thing we did uh, for the hem where we knit one purl one and the knit stitch is a twisted knit stitch so a twisted ribbing so this is all I'm going to do here for this first row I'm just picking up these stitches so for each chain you're going to pick up a stitch continue like this all around I will meet you here at the end to show you what we need to do next Okay, I finished picking up all of these stitches all around. Since I had 82 chains at the beginning, I have 82 stitches here all around. So now we're going to work the neckline in the round and I'm going to do the same thing I did here. I'm going to make um, the twisted ribbing here. So since I'm working with longer needles, I'm going to pull a loop here to work this part using the magic loop technique. So just pull a loop right there push this needle pull the needle from the back now through the center knit the first stitch twist it the next stitch purl knit the next stitch twist it and then purl the next Now this is all we're going to do. We're going to knit one twisted purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. All the knit stitches are twisted, don't forget. Now drop that needle, 
and turn. And now we're going to continue and work these stitches. So grab the needle from the back. And since this last stitch here was a pearl, I need to knit this next stitch. So knit, pearl. I'm at the end, so knit, purl. Perfect. Now drop that needle, turn, put this stitch marker here, and push your cable or pull this loop here. And we're going to repeat the same thing now. Pull the needle from the back and do the same thing. The first stitch is a knit, so you knit through the center so that it's a twisted knit stitch, and then the next stitch, a purl. So knit, purl. Now, this part here is the same from here on, just like we did uh, the hem here. So continue, I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do, but continue watching. I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do, so I will meet you at the end of that row. Okay, I'm almost done with the neckline. I have done a total of five rows, so I'm going to now cast off my stitches. If you want to make this here wider, you can. Just continue adding more rows. So to do this part here, pull the needle from the back, and we're going to knit the first stitch like this and purl the next. Bring the second stitch over the first, Again, knit the next stitch, bring the second stitch over the first, and so on. This part here is the same. It's exactly how we cast off for the bottom hem. Now continue like this. Finish this row, or finish casting off your stitches, and then I'll come back and show you how to do the sleeves. Okay, I finished casting off these stitches all around the neckline, so here I'm just going to pass my yarn through this last loop. Now with the yarn needle here, we're going to join. We have the first stitch, insert the needle like this, and then go through the first stitch. You can either go here, this is the last stitch, or here. I'm going to try going into the second to last. I think that looks better. Now we're going to go through the back and hide this yarn here. Make sure you hide all these ends and the neckline is done. And that's how it looks. So this here is the back side and here is the front. So now what we're going to do is the sleeve. So here's the back. We're going to go here with the back facing me. This would be the right side. So we're going to go right here under the sleeve. Uh, first, we're going to put all of these stitches into our needles. So I'm just going to put this end of the needle through this little hole that's on my tube here. And I'm going to pull half of these stitches.
we're going to go right under the sleeve here. We have four stitches here under the sleeves. This is when we divided, we added four extra stitches. So I'm going to go right here with the help of a crochet hook. I'm going to go right in the middle of these four. So I'm going to pick up two stitches on this side. I'm going to pick up two stitches on this side once I finish the first row. And I'm going to add an extra stitch right here in the center so that here in this part, I have five stitches. And at the end of this row, I have 48 stitches. This is because I want to make sure I have an even number of stitches as it is. I have 43 for the sleeves. And then if I only do four here, that would give me 47. So I'm going to add an extra stitch by inserting my hook right in the middle of these four. So two and two on both sides. Insert your hook now with the same yarn here. Grab a loop, bring it through. Now I'm going to insert this needle here into this first stitch. So pull the needle like this. Now we're going to pick up a stitch into the next column here and then into the next. There, so, so far I have three stitches. Now we're going to knit these stitches here for the sleeve. And again, I have a loop here because we're going to knit the sleeves in the round. So I am going to knit across all of these stitches for this needle here. There, drop that needle, turn, push your cable, grab the needle from the back. Always make sure that this yarn is in front of the back needle. Pull the needle from the back and continue to knit the next set of stitches. Make sure that this stitch here is nice and tight so that there's no gap between the stitches. I've knit these 43 stitches for the sleeve plus three stitches. I have 43, 44, 45, 46. I need to pick up these last two. Now pull the needle from the back. And before we continue, we need to pick up these stitches. So here to finish the row, we're going to pick up these last two stitches. Okay, I'm going to use the crochet hook to make it easier. Pull a loop and put the needle through and then pick up the other stitch right there. So I have my last two stitches here. So I'm going to pull my cable so that these stitches are now part of this side now. And here we have the beginning of the row. So put a stitch marker. Now we're going to continue for the second row and knit all around. At the end of the first row, I had 48 stitches. We had 43 plus five here in the center. That's 48 stitches, which is perfect. I just need an even number of stitches. So here I'm just going to now continue and knit all around like this. I'm going to remove the stitch marker. I don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to place it right here into the first row that I just did. This is because I'm going to be decreasing after the 16th row. So I'm going to knit 16 rows and then in the 17th row, I'm going to decrease. So here, let me show you again how to go from this needle There. 
Now turn, push your cable. Pull the needle from the back and continue knitting these stitches until you finish the row. Turn, push your cable. I finished the second row and at the end of this row I also have 48 stitches now. Now pull the needle from the back and continue on and knit all around until you have 16 rows. Once I have these 16 rows I'm going to come back and show you how we are going to work our decreases here for the sleeve. So continue. I'll meet you at the end of the 16th row. Okay, I finished making these 16 rows here for the sleeve. So now we're going to decrease at the beginning and decrease at the end of the row. So pull the needle from the back. Here we're going to knit two together because this is the beginning of the row. So knit two together. And then I'm going to knit all the way to the last two stitches. And then I'm going to show you how to decrease at the end of the row. There, now we have the last two stitches. I'm going to slip the first stitch, knit the last stitch, bring this stitch that you slipped over the last stitch. And this is how we're going to decrease from here on. Now turn, drop that needle, push your cable, and here we're going to repeat again 16 more rows and then in row 17, we're going to repeat this decreasing row and then that's how we're going to continue. I think I'm going to do about three decreases. So continue watching. I will let you know exactly how many decreases I'm going to do, but really all you're doing is just knit 16 rows and then row 17 decrease. That's how you're going to continue. In the rows where we decrease, you're going to be decreasing by two stitches. So here uh, we have 46 stitches at the end of this 17th row. Continue watching and you'll see how many decreases I'm going to do. So I will meet you at the end of that row. Okay, I'm almost done with the sleeve. I have done a total of 67 rows. So from here up to here, there's 67 rows and I did three decreases. I did one, two, three. So I did 16 rows, then decrease, 16 rows, decrease, 16 rows, decrease. And then here at the end, I did 16 rows and I'm not going to decrease at the end. I have a total of 42 stitches here. So in total, I have 67 rows. Now for the cuff, we're going to do the same thing we did for the neckline and for the hem here. We're going to do the twisted uh, ribbing here. So pull your needle and we're going to knit through the center the first stitch. And we're going to purl. Knit through the center and purl. Knit through the center and purl. And this is all I'm going to do for this first row. Here's the last stitch, purl. Drop that needle turn and repeat the same thing for the second row. Pull the needle from the back and knit the first stitch through the center because we're doing the twisted knit stitch here and purl the next and so on. Now I'm not sure how many rows I'm going to do here for the cuff 
but continue watching. I will let you know exactly how many rows I'm going to do. You can do less, you can do more. You can even make the cuff a bit longer and then just fold it that way. Your child can wear this a little longer, which is what I think I'm going to do. So continue, finish this part and continue watching so that you can see how many rows I'm going to do. And then I'll show you how we're going to cast off our stitches and then start on the second sleeve. Okay, I'm almost done with the cuff. I have done a total of seven rows. Let's see, we have two, four, six, seven. So we're going to cast off on the eighth row. So pull the needle from the back and this part is the same. Knit the first stitch through the center, purl the next. Now bring the first stitch over the second. Again, knit the next stitch, bring the first stitch over the second, purl the next, bring this stitch over, and so on. This part is the same of how we did it for the neckline and for the hem. Continue all around, finish the cuff, and then I'll come back and show you how to do the second sleeve. I finished casting off all of my stitches here at the end. It's just joined and hid my ends here on the inside. So the sleeve is all done and this is how it looks. Now you're going to repeat exactly the same thing. I'm just going to start you off on the other side here, the first row or so, and then you're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to go here, Now, here's my stitch marker. This is telling me that I need to start the sleeve on this side. Now we're going to start with the second sleeve. And same thing, remember for the sleeve we have 43 stitches and we're going to pick up these four stitches plus an extra stitch. So to do this, we have our yarn right in the middle. Remember we have four stitches here, one, two, three, four, right in the middle, right here. You're going to grab your yarn. Now pull this needle, insert that loop that you pulled now i forgot to mention on the first sleeve to leave a nice tail here so that if there is a gap like this one here you can just join that gap with the remaining yarn that we're going to leave here so now we're going to pick up two more stitches so i'm going to go right here grab a loop and pick up the next stitch grab a loop so here I have three stitches and now I'm going to continue and knit the stitches for the sleeve. Here's the last stitch out of the 43. So here I have 46 stitches because we had 43 here plus three, that's 46. And I need to pick up two more stitches here at the end. Now here are the two stitches that are part of the four that we added. So just insert your needle there, grab a loop, and into the next, grab a loop. And now I have 48 stitches all around. Now turn. Push this needle, grab the needle from the back, and this here is going to be the beginning of the row. So now we're just going to knit all around for the second row with 48 stitches.
Here's the last stitch. Drop that needle, turn, push your cable, and start the third row. And that's how you're going to continue from here on and you're going to repeat the same thing that we did for the first sleeve. Here's the first sleeve. You're going to knit 16 rows, then in row 17 you're going to decrease, then knit 16 rows again, and then decrease on row 17. Again, knit 16 rows, and then decrease on the 17th row, and then knit 16 rows, and then do the cuff here. And that's how you're going to do the second sleeve. So continue, finish the sleeve. I finished making the second sleeve. I did it exactly in the same way how I showed you here for the first one. So this little pullover sweater is all done. Look how beautiful this looks. I absolutely love this uh, design here. It's absolutely beautiful and very easy. Remember that we use a crochet hook to make the yoke and then we pick up the stitches to make the body and the sleeves. So for this size here, which is for two to three years old, we used a 3.5 millimeter hook and 3.5 millimeter kneading needles. Now you can easily make it smaller or bigger, I'd say from one to two years old and up to six to seven years old, just by changing needle and hook size. So in the information box below, I'll go ahead and leave you some information on how you can make it smaller or bigger, so be sure to check that out. Now let me give you the final measurements. From the top here of the neckline down to the end of the sleeve, it's measuring about 41 centimeters, which is about 16 inches. From under the sleeve to the end of the sleeve, it's measuring about 24 centimeters, which is about 9.5 inches. Now, the total length from the top of the shoulder down to the end here of the hem, it's measuring about 41 centimeters, which is about 16 inches. And the chest measurement, just the top, it's measuring about 32 centimeters, which is about 12.5 inches. Oh, and this measurement here, right across, it's measuring about 19 centimeters, which is about 7.5 inches. So again, based on these measurements, this little pullover sweater is for boys and girls between two and three years old. Now remember, I already have a smaller version of this in the information box below. I'll go ahead and leave you that tutorial. Now stay tuned, in another tutorial I'm going to try to make the medium sized version of this for adults. Um, I have the measurements that I need for that size, so I am going to go ahead and attempt to do that, so stay tuned for that. This was today's tutorial, I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.